Good morning, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Joe, and I'm so glad you joined me for home worship today. Today's a new day, and tomorrow's going to get better because we're going to read the Word of God and learn how there's power in the Word of God to overcome sin. So before we get into the Word, I'd like to say a prayer, so please bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I humbly come before your throne. I thank you, Lord, for drawing the people to the message today. I thank you, Father, for putting the message together. And I pray that you fill me with double the Holy Spirit, or as much Holy Spirit as you so desire to give me. And I pray it's your words that come out of my mouth, not mine. And I pray your will always be done, not mine. And I pray this in the precious name of Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, you may hear me say Yeshua sometimes. That's how you say Jesus in Hebrew. And so, if you brought your Bibles today, turn to the book of Hebrew, chapter 4. And we'll read verse 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerning of thoughts and intents of the heart. So the word of God is very powerful. It cuts like a two-edged sword. And that's what we're going to learn about today and how you can overcome sin by using the Word of God. And as you know, Jesus is our King, our Master. He's our teacher and example. And we believe His doctrine and we obey Him. And He gives us examples as I just shared with you. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the example that he gives us of how to overcome sin when being tempted. And so we will turn to the book of Luke, chapter 4. Reading verse 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for forty days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And that exact wording is found in Deuteronomy 8.3. Continually reading from verse 5. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showing him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered him and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. And this too is found in Deuteronomy 6.13. Then he brought him up to Jerusalem, set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over him, to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered him and said to him, 
It has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. And this too is found in Deuteronomy 6.16. So brothers and sisters, the Lord gives us an example and teaches us how to overcome sin by the power of using the word of God. Amen? Amen. Each example, he used the word of God that was written through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The word of God is the truth. What is the truth? This is the truth. The whole entire Bible. The New Testament is the gospel. And the four first books are the gospel of Jesus. And it's all the gospel truth. The word of God is the truth. And it cuts like a knife, like a two-edged sword. So use it. Use it to overcome the devil. In Jude, Michael has a dispute with the devil over the body of Moses. Michael overcomes the devil by using the words, the Lord rebuke you. And that is also written word for word in Zechariah 3, 2. So you see, brothers and sisters, the devil cannot stand the word of God and he will flee. What I use if the devil is tempting me is I say, by the blood of Jesus, the Lord rebuke you, and he's gone. Right then. Simple as that. So practice that, brothers and sisters. Practice it, because he cannot stand the word of God, and he will flee. Now that doesn't mean he won't come back at a different time to tempt you, but he will flee then. Do you understand? And the more you practice it, the less the devil is going to tempt you. He's going to go after the weaker Christian, the baby Christian. When you become an adult Christian and you learn the tools that the Lord has given you and the word of God is a tool that you must use to rebuke the devil and he will flee. And he'll get tired of coming to you and he'll go to somebody else and you will better yourself in grace and you will better yourself in sanctification and practicing righteousness. But again, he will still continue to tempt you as long as you live. But you'll get better and better at rebuking the devil by the blood of Jesus. Simply say, by the blood of Jesus, the Lord rebuke you, and he's gone. Amen? Amen. So use that power, brothers and sisters. All right? All right. So today is a new day. And tomorrow is going to get better because we're all going to rebuke the devil. We're all going to be telling the devil when he tempts us in the blood of Jesus, the Lord rebuke you. Amen? Amen.